Okay, hi, uh, welcome. Um, just a little quick few little announcements here today. Um, so if you didn't see uh, last Wednesday, I did start showing, talking about assignment five. So hopefully everybody's working on assignment five by now. Um, um, I had posted some other announcements, you know, so I am gonna open up the test, the, our final test five uh, early, and it'll be open for uh, a lot longer than normal. So, you know, if, if it'll be helpful for you to finish off um, the, um, uh, our, all of our coursework for the class uh, a little bit earlier here for during our final week of regular classes. Um, you can do that. Uh, for assignment five, uh, I had kind of a quick announcement. Um, so some people have already found out that um, um, you will get, uh, you, you should be getting this error. So when you do your um, unit tests, you'll find that it's failing on um, the test on line 55, even if you get everything working correctly, even if you implement everything correctly on assignment five to get the base general the, the the base scheduling policy class to work correctly. It'll still be failing this test on line 55. Um, maybe real quickly I'll show you so um, um, what this is about here. Um, so this isn't um, all that common of a um, Uh, of, of a of a thing to do for unit tests, but, but you might see it sometimes. So um, in the unit tests here, the very first one, uh, the very first test case that we have, um, we actually call this uh, generate random process table. So what this does is it, it's supposed to generate um, a sequence of, um, of, of processes and, and process arrival times and process um, service times at random, basically. So when, when you call process, um, ran, generate random process table, um, you know, you're passing in like the number of processes that you want, which is 10. Um, and um, the arrival probability. So this would be, you know, in this case, by saying 0.33, you're saying that at every time step, there's a 33% chance that a new process will arrive. Or you would expect a process to arrive once about every three time steps here, which you'll see. So one arrives at zero, one time three, six, nine. So, so it's not exactly every three. So, so it is random, but, but in general, you'll get um, um, about one every three time steps or so, basically, right? Um, and then the max service time. And then this last parameter here is actually a random seed. Okay, so basically, if you if you set the random seed before you call the random number generator to generate random numbers, which is what we use to generate these numbers to create when the, the time at random when a process arrives and and the um, the um, the service time, so how much time each process is going to take, right? So supposedly, if you call the random seed, you should always get the the same. Um, you know, if you set the random seed to some known, known value, you should always get the same sequence of random numbers. So, so thus we would expect the same random processes arriving at, at, at these, these times and for this length of time, right? Um, but um, basically, you know, if, if, the, um, if the library, if your random number library um, changes a little bit or whatever, I mean, the, the sequence, even though you're setting the same seed, could be slightly different. And I didn't quite have the sequence set correctly. So again, you know, what you'll get um, if you run your tests is that um, uh, you'll get this failure. Even if you get everything to pass, you do all the, the tasks in the first part of assignment five, but it would still be failing on this one. But really all you have to do is you, you just need to correctly have it um, um, uh, set to expect the right processes. Okay, so, so I did push that. Um, so I, I think uh, actually the, these are the old ones here, but if you do a, um, 
as I said in my announcement, if you go to uh, assignment five, so, so if you change into your directory, uh, your repository directory, and you do a git pull, um, it should pull down. Uh, I think you'll see it. Yeah. So for me, it, it, it pull. Oh, well, um, if you've never done this before, you might have to config these. Um, so I'll go ahead and do this. So set my user email and my username. So if you've done those, you should be able to do a git poll. Hopefully you've done um, a git poll um, on this thing. So I've got some changes on my, my local directory. If, if you get uh, an error that local changes would happen, it means that you edited the assignment five test by hand, which is what I must have done here. You, you probably shouldn't get that unless you actually make this change by hand, which you can do. Um, so so I, I, I told you in my announcement, um, that if you just change that line 55 to be this that that's a, I mean, that's the other way you could change it by hand um but um i'm gonna get rid of this um or again you should um If you do a get pull, you should see that it will just pull down the, the new assignment five tests for you. So, so for me, oh, I kind of need to get rid of that. Um, Sorry about this. Just some Git stuff here. Git, Git's a good tool. I mean, you really do need to should learn Git if you don't know it. Um, but uh, but yeah, I wanted to demonstrate. Okay, but now maybe finally, if I do get pull, uh, this is what you should probably see. Unless again, you had a conflict and you you um, modify. Well, again, yeah, you shouldn't see this, so it shouldn't need to merge anything. So. Um, Anyway, however, however you do that, um, then I'm going to go over, back over to my solutions here. If, if you run your unit tests, so I'll run my test by doing make tests. Um, you can get it to pass if, if you get the uh, correct expectations for the um, um, uh, for, for, for for generating the random process table. If you just set that correctly, okay. Um, and then the other thing that I want to talk about then was the system tests. So um, again, um, even if you get all your unit tests passing, and even if you implement, you know, either like round robin or shortest process next, um, I think those were the the two options. I mean, you could you could implement something else. I don't think I have unit tests for anything else besides round robin or shortest process next. Um, um, I can't remember if I suggested some other things. Shortest remaining time, um, yeah, or, or highest response ratio next. So, so you could implement those, um, but um, if, if you implement like um, round robin or shortest process next, you still wouldn't get these system tests to pass unless you modify the, the simulation to be able to run those. So let me show you what you need to do to do that, okay? So again, I'm going to do this from my assignment five solutions, uh, where I've already got the solutions done, except I don't have um, the, um, the simulator modified so it could actually call your policy. Okay, so if, if you look through the code for the assignment five sim.cpp, if you look through there carefully, um, as I originally gave it to you, I actually had some things commented out. So you can just uncomment that. Uh, I believe you should find this here, right? So, so basically, all we're doing is so. So, I'll show running this from from the command line by hand here. But we're expecting <laughs> we're expecting the first command line parameter 
Um, to specify the policy name here. So originally, if you've only implemented first come first serve, that was the only thing being checked. But um, if you implement, um, I mean, I don't think it'll hurt anything. Well, um, yeah, it will hurt something. So yeah, if you only implemented round robin, um, you should like comment out. You should only uncomment the, the round robin, right? Um, or vice versa, if you only implement short pro shortest um, process next, uh, you should um, have that one and not have this commented out. Okay, I have both of these. So I can go ahead and um, comment both of these. So, so basically, you know, these won't work unless you actually have this um, class implemented and compiled into your project. Okay, so round robin scheduling policy or shortest process next scheduling policy are the examples that we implement here, right? So if you have those, though, you should be able to comment that out. Um, so notice all we're doing here. Um, is that when we create a scheduling system simulation, we give it the, the particular policy that you tell that you want to run in your simulation, right? And, and in this case, after I encounter those, I'm, I'm supporting three um, policies. So not only the first come first serve scheduling policy, but the round robin and the short process and the next, okay? So um, these are still having some problems here in Visual Studio. Uh, so notice the underscore squiggly line. Maybe we have to also add in and include for those. Yeah, so, so I guess besides those. So it might not compile yet, even though uncommoning those, if you don't add in also the include for the header file. So in my case, I want to add both of these. So the round robin scheduling. And the... Um, the shortest process next scheduling policy, right? So hopefully that would make Visual Studio happier about those if we include those. Okay, so all that should allow me to, let's do a clean build here. So um, um, should allow me to do a make and um, we should see that when it compiles the assignment five sim, that it compiles, uh, and then it, when it links together the, the simulation, the, the, the sim um, executable, that it links in um, not only the um, first come first serve, but also the round robin and the short process next scheduling policy, okay? So th that's actually another thing that you'll need to do. I mentioned that um, in our previous video. Um, so um, you, you also need to, to, to get these working. So, um, so my compile is probably gonna fail because I'm only building the round robin scheduler right now in my make file. So, so to get that to work, you know, you need to add in the, the scheduling policy that you implement to your sources. You need to add that also into your objects. Um, uh, here, I only showed the example of, of adding in the round robin scheduler to the objects um, and you should add that in down here at the bottom as well. So the additional prerequisites, okay. So in my case, um, I'm, I'm expecting this is gonna fail here because um, when I get to, to linking together everything, um, I, I was trying to also use shortest process next, um, but I'm not, compiling shortest process next and I'm not, not linking that together into my sim here. So I've got a undefined reference to the shortest process next scheduling policy. So um, so like I said, I, I showed this in the previous, but but I'll show it again some more here. So, so if I also have my shortest process next scheduling policy um, implemented, um, I can add that in as well. 
So I'll have my first come first serve by Ron Robin and also the shortest process next scheduling policy. So again, as a reminder here for this first one, make certain that everything ends with this backslash in your make file, except for the very last one. So, so that's the only one that shouldn't have a backslash here. Likewise with this one, Um, you need to specify all the object files that need to be compiled together, um, that you're trying to compile together. So again, if, if you only implement one of these, you should only have one of these, but I'm adding in both of these since I have both round robin and shortest process next um, implemented here in the example I'm trying to do. And finally, at the end here, I mean, you know, I encourage you to learn, you know, the basics of make files. We had to specify, um, or we should specify in order to make certain everything compiles correctly, um, additional um, prerequisites. So for all of these, it looks pretty similar to the pattern. So for um, shortest process next, uh, the object file should depend on the .cpp source file and also the header file. So, so if we make any changes to either of those, we should recompile the shortest process next scheduling policy object file. Um, and, and also since, since both of these are actually subclasses of the scheduling policy base class. If anything changes in the, the scheduling policy header file, we, we would need to recompile these object files as well. So, uh, all right. So that should be enough. That um, if you do that, and if you uncomment um, in the .sim file, if you make it, should be able to. Um, um, rebuild your scheduler like short process next or round robin into an optic file which is what we do here um, on this first line and then it should be able to compile and link together the test and successfully link the simulation so notice again here since i added those um, um, to the um, objects here so all these objects get linked in uh, when we try to create your test for the unit test we're linking in um, all of those object files, including the round robin scheduling policy that I added last time and the shortest process next scheduling policy that I just added here. Um, and we also do that with, with the simulation, okay. Um, so a little bit about these, I mean, I, I, I think that in, uh, I mean, way early in this class, I talked a little bit about of running these simulations, right? So, so maybe I'll talk a little bit more about these because you haven't had to, to really modify these or, or use the simulations by hand too much. Maybe you did that a little bit. I hope you hope you you learned a little bit about these and looked at how to use these. Okay. So, so these are examples of programs that are meant to be run from the command line. So we actually use the command line arguments, right? Um, so if you so I can run this from the command line. If I if I enter in like a dash H or dash question mark, um, you'll actually get a usage message, um, which is pretty standard for a command line tool like this, right? So it's just a little bit of information about how to run the, the command and then what command line arguments it expects. So in this case, we expect the first, it expects exactly uh, expe expects two command line arguments and an optional third one. So the first one is supposed to be the name of the job scheduling policy that you want to simulate. So in this case, since I added round robin and source, source process next, and we already had first come first serve, you can specify any of those three scheduling policies to be used for the simulation, right? Um, and then the second is the um, is the um, input file for the simulation. So, so the, the list of, of process table arrival times and service times um, that you're using in the simulation. We talked a little bit about um, in, in last week's video, um, the, the, the structure of that, okay? And then the third one is optional. So sometimes, well, basically for the round robin scheduler, we also need a time slice quantum specified for that scheduling strategy. So for anything that needs a time slice quantum, you could specify that as like an optional third command line argument. So 
so the way these work, um, so if, if you didn't know about command line arguments, so main is a function like any other function, and you can pass in arguments. Um, so there's a specific two arguments that main will ex expect. Um, and these are passed in by the operating system. So if I, um, so, so in this case, I, I want to call my sim executable. Let, let's do it with the first come first serve, right? So it's expecting either first come first serve, round robin or source process next um, as the first command line argument. And then the second one is one of these process tables. So those are all in a directory called sim files. Um, like process table 01.sim, all right? So if I call it with the, those, those command line arguments, um, um, those will be, so, so argc will be the number of command line arguments, so just the count. So argc stands for argument count, right? So in this case, it, it, it includes the name of the program you're executing as one of the argument counts, okay? So in this case, we've got, it's going to say that the argument count is three, one, two, three. So we've got three, and and basically the arguments are going to be separated by white space. Okay, so 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 one or more spaces or tabs uh, will be considered um, white space, right? Um, and it will just parse these into three command line arguments. The operating system does this, or actually the bash seven, the bash sh command line shell does this in this case. Um, so that's why we check. So we expected because of that optional argument uh, that there should either be exactly three or exactly four command line arguments. So, so we check that if we don't get exactly three or four arguments, we print out that usage message which prints it out and exits immediately. All right. So that's all that, that, that this usage message is, is doing here. If we get um, our, our three or four command line arguments, we expect the very first one, actually, actually argv0 is gonna be the name of the program. So again, if, if and, and this is just using old style uh, array of, of, of characters. So argv0 would just be an array of characters that holds the name of the program as you invoked it, but then argv1 would be the policy name. Um, so, so we basically use a new C++ string here to convert you know, the, the character array into um, a C++ string, okay? And that becomes our policy name. But, but that's basically gonna be holding the string FCFS um, in this example that I'm doing. Uh, and then argv2, so, so this would be argv0, argv1 would be the next command line argument, and argv2 would be the name of the sim file that you want to read, or, the, or what I call the process table file name here. So again, we, we just expect that to be a string, and, and we, we convert that into a new C++ string, okay? And then if we have a fourth command line argument, we expect that to be an integer to represent the time slice quantum, if we're using time slice quantum. Um, time slicing um, in our simulation. So we would we use ASCII to integer to convert the string in, you know, the ASCII string into an integer value in that case, right? Um, so then if you run that, right, so it, it's going to be using the, the first come first serve, or it's going to be using whatever this, this first string is to figure out and, and dynamically create scheduling policy, right? And since we uncommented those, we now will support round robin and shortest process next. And again, you shouldn't uncomment, you know, if you haven't, if you haven't actually implemented a shortest process next, uh, your code won't compile if you uncomment that. So you, you don't want to have an else and try to create the object for the scheduling policy that you actually uh, implemented. So anyway, that, that's about it. So, so that should allow me, so that should allow me to run, you know, here I'm running first come first serve by hand, right? Um, and if you implemented your code correctly, so there was something in, well, the, the first come first serve was given to you, but this should run the simulation and give the resulting um, schedule of processes. So first come first serve, since A arrives first, just runs A runs all of A and then B arrives second, so it runs all of B and so on. So first come first serve is a, is a fairly simple 
scheduling policy, but it, it also should display the resulting table of the when each process started, when each process ended, um, the turnaround time and the ratio of the turnaround time to the, um, the, the, the total, the, the service time for the process, right? Um, but I should be able to run this, say, with round robin, um, although round robin needs a time slice quantum. So if I want to run round robin with a time slice quantum of two, um, I can do this by hand, by putting the time slice quantum at the end here. So that should be assuming that I implemented my round robin scheduler correctly. This should be the schedule I get with, with a time slice uh, two, time slice quantum of two here, um, and my process table that's in the, the process table zero one sim here. Um, or we could run first process next. So notice for shows process next. Um, in this case, um, it didn't run it the, the same order as first come first serve. So it ran A B, but then at that point it chose E because E C and D I think are all in the system at this point by time nine, um, and E is the shortest process. So, so E becomes the shortest process next to run, followed by C. So C shorter than D. So. All right. So yeah, I mean, if, if you implemented something besides round robin or shortest process next, like a uh, highest response ratio, you know, you, you would have to add in um, um, something to um, create your highest response highest response ratio, say HRR, highest response ratio, um, scheduling policy, right? So, or whatever, right? Uh, and then one final thing here, and then, then I'm kind of done uh, with this example. So, I mean, if you did implement um, Chores Process Next or Round Robin. I actually do have some system tests of those. And if you add those to your simulator, the, the system test should work. So, um, um, so I'm just going to run my system tests. All right. So, in this case, uh, if, if you add that into your simulation, It'll try to run the system tests for either your round robin or shortest process next if, if you implemented either of those, right? Um, and, it'll, and you know, if you only implement one of those, of course you would fail the other ones. But if you correctly compile, so if you correctly change your make file, so you're compiling in your scheduling policy, and if you correctly change your assignment uh, five uh, sim so that it actually invokes your scheduling policy when you ask for it from the command line, um, like I was doing by showing you by hand here. Um, and you also correctly output, you know, you're, you're correctly generating the output of your schedule um, and your final result table as expected, then you should be able to pass um, your system test for either round robin or shortage process next, all right? All right, so I think that was it. That, that's all I was going to kind of show you for this uh, video. So as usual, I am kind of, um, I don't know if I'll do a help session on this Wednesday, um, but, uh, you know, either way, you know, feel free to uh, keep sending emails. I have a lot of people ask me questions through email, so I know a lot of people are working on these assignments. I'm working on the assignment five already, so, you know, keep, keep the questions coming by email. Um, I'm always happy, if we need to, to, to set up a one-to-one -one, um, Zoom session as well. Um, all right, and that's uh, it for this video. Um, and yeah, keep working. And you know, we're almost at the end, and I will see you guys uh, later.